Y'all, we back the day 20 of the 28 days of Black American History Month. I'm really excited about tonight, y'all. Um, like I said yesterday, I'm going to do a reading. Um, the article that I actually ran across um, in the Black Book by Toni Morrison, um, I ran across it maybe earlier this week. I feel like it was last week. Um, but y'all, y'all know how COVID is with time. <laughs> um, but I ran across it and it just, it really shook me because it really like started to make me like, well, not started, but like it, it validated, um, thoughts that I'd already had prior, um, and reconfirmed a lot of the things that I was talking about, um, previously in some of these videos um and in just conversations that i've been having for like the longest um but yeah it just i was a little shook so i'm gonna i'm gonna dab in we'll talk a little bit after um this article was published in a paper called the liberator um in 1858 um september 3rd 1858 to be exact um and it's called Negro Mechanics. Okay. There is much that is worthy of consideration in the following remarks of Centreville Inquirer, which first met our eye in the Pennsylvania Observer. We believe the legislatures of slave holding states should pass an act prohibiting the owners of slaves from making mechanics of them. The rice, corn, and cotton fields is the proper place for the Negro and not the workshop. That should be kept for the white man exclusively. There are thousands of industrious, enterprising young men who are driven from mechanical trades rather than work all day side by side with the Negro. Their pride revolts at it, and we think very properly all cannot be professional men. Their inclinations do not lead in that way, but Necessity dri drives them to business of some kind, and they rush into the learned professions without one single qualification. And why do they do, why do, they do this? Because they do not like to be thrown into daily intercourse with the Negro mechanics. See how many young lawyers and physicians are starving because the country is overrun with them and they pri their pride for forbids them from following trades. But exclude the Negro race from the mechanical arts and you are at once ennoble the business. Men who are now ashamed to acknowledge themselves mechanics would take pride in it and there would be but few drones in society. All parents are not able to give their children education sufficient to be a professional character, and how far superior is the respectable artisan to be to the quack doc to the quack doctor or the jack leg lawyer, the one scarcely able to distinguish chill from fever, and the other incompetent to make a speech in a magistrate's court. We hope the legislatures of the different states will take this matter into consideration. We are aware that men will say we have the right to do as, to, as we please with our Negroes and convert them to any use we think proper, but it is not so. The rich have no right to build up fortunes at the expense of the poor, and this is done whenever you degrade the mechanic to the level of the slave. The only trade entirely excluded from the Negro is the printer. The, uh, he may defy them, for the states have wisely prohibited them from education. No one will pretend that a master who owns a skillful mechanic ought to be or can be deprived of half of his value by a law forbidding such mechanic from working at a trade which has been taught at much expense and loss of time. The master beyond dispute has a vested right in the enhanced productiveness of the mechanic slave's labor at a trade wherein skill, training, and intelligence are as important elements as physical strength. Nor is it certain that a law which would permit Negroes who have already acquired mechanic arts to work at them, but which should prohibit any others from being taught and employed at such trades would be quite equitable and just to the owners of intelligent Negroes whose services would be du doubled in value by being so instructed and employed. 
If the proposal to exclude Negroes from mechanic arts were merely a question of competition between white mechanics and the few owners of Negro mechanics, a satisfactory, a satisfactory solution of it might be reached by legislation. But laws, if just, are not made for classes, but for the whole people. We are to guard with lynx-eyed vigilance against all that can endanger, even remotely, our vital institution. It is much to be feared that any hasty and unnecessary tampering with limits where enslaved labor may be employed may become a precedent for a greater mis mischief hereafter. <sighs> I guess I should show these pictures. I guess, so it's a couple of different like articles displayed on this particular page, but I feel like the portraits um, kind of go along with the article. Sort of men in the workshop, mechanics, black men on the job. Very interesting stuff, y'all. It definitely had me thinking. Um, just the idea that, which is not far-fetched because we're literally living in this space as we speak um it but it speaks to the root of it the the systemic racism it speaks to the root of you know everything that we've been talking about for the longest time um it's systemic and it's been around since slavery this was um 1858 slavery was about was abolished in um 1865 you know and still though, you know, the idea that, again, like today, there's this carving out of space in order to support whiteness, in order to support, you know, if you weren't aware, we live in America, and in America there is a caste system. In America, um, black Americans are were bottom cast that we were created to be a permanent underclass. Um, they made it so. That's how you get redlining. That's how you get the prison industrial complex. That's how you get, you know, job discrimination, loan discrimination. That's how you get all of these things, um, not only to keep us bottom casted, but to support whiteness and to support medio mediocrity. Um, and in order to support, like in this article where they blatantly said, you know, you have all of these like white people, these lawyers and these like doctors and stuff who are kind of out of work because the job market is so full. You know, there's so many people who are doing these jobs and they, they don't have jobs, but they don't want to work on the side of Negroes, you know, black folks, black Americans. They don't want to work on the side of us. And even the poor whites at the time, they don't want to work on the side of us because it makes them feel less. It makes them feel on par of the slave. You know what I mean? Craziness, <laughs> right? And it just, it, it makes me um, think of just like that whole conversation about like, I, even this past week, I forget what I was looking at, but I, it, I scoff every time I hear about it because it's just like, people are quick to bring up that whole like poor whites conversation. And it's just like, but they're white. <laughs> they inherently get that privilege so it's like it's not even it's not the same thing and I've even I remember having like like back in college and even just like in my adult life people trying to bring up that poor whites thing like it's equal like it's the same it's not and it's never been as stated in this article um literally like you know politicians literally like these media outlets and all of these different people trying to or literally like making a system where they can literally say, okay, no, we don't want white people to feel, you know what I mean? Ego feel like, you know, they're, they're low. We don't want to like strike their pride by having them working alongside black folks. So stop having black folks where even though these were enslaved people, um, the fact that like literally people weren't working because they didn't want to work beside black folks and then like it was an issue that 
I don't know, just, it's it's weird. Very strange, Um, but it's, like I said, it speaks to the systemic racism of it all. It speaks to the bottom casting. It speaks to, like, the facade of whiteness and how it was created and how, like, <sighs> just how disgusting it is, just in general. Um, how... As much as how how much what's the, what I know exactly what I'm trying to say. How can I put it? All the energy, <laughs> all the energy that was put into like whiteness and like in its in all its mediocrity to make it seem like this great thing, to make it seem like this like just magnificent thing how small these <laughs> I don't mean it like that but like these motherfuckers were some fucking haters I'm sorry to say it. and I'm live so I can't take it back but like the idea that you gotta like hate on niggas so hard <laughs> niggas was building the fuck out of whatever they was building like and this is uh, it's it's sad and it's frustrating and it's annoying but it's comical because it's just like you got to create a whole system to keep niggas down like you literally like got to write articles to persuade people to like shit on niggas like you literally like are intimidated to work alongside niggas like you mad because you poor and that you got to work aside, alongside niggas. So you got all these people writing articles. Because <laughs> you don't want to feel like a slave. You don't want to feel poor. You don't want to. But like just the idea of catering to like white egos. And like uh, it's just it's strange. Like racism is a mental illness like anti-blackness is a mental fucking illness and when you read stuff like this you can't help it just it, it validates that statement so much because it's just like this is insanity like y'all are crazy like the fact that you could ens enslave a whole human being just in itself is insanity like the fact that you could lynch motherfuckers and like i'm so sorry y'all i'm cursing but it's just like like the fact that you could do all the things is insanity but like all of like the effort and just like sinister like moves that they would make to like hold niggas down it is just it's insane and it's crazy and it's like and of course I don't laugh you know because of course my ancestors and you know hell myself my friends my family we suffer at the hands of anti-blackness and racism <clears throat> I don't laugh because of that, but just the idea that all of that effort went into holding folks down in that way and like you literally having to like write articles and like write to legislature just to like <laughs> make it so that you wouldn't have to work as alongside like black folks. It's insane. It it trips me the hell out. When I read it, I knew I had to like bring it to y'all because yeah, it literally says, hold on, let me find it. Where is it? I'm trying to find the part where it says, uh, when it talks specifically about like the pride and like their egos being like bruised uh, because they got to work alongside uh, Negroes. I can't find it. I'm trying to skim. I just read it. Y'all heard it. It's a mess. It's insane, but I thought I'd bring it to y'all. Um, those are my thoughts. Um, we got, we got it's just like the fragility of it all. Like it makes no sense. And the fact that we constantly like have to deal with this shit is just fucking crazy. It really makes no sense. Um, but yeah, that's, 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 that's that on that. That's that on that. That's day 20 of the 28 days of Black American History Month. Um, I'll be back tomorrow for day 21. 
Um, again, we read it from Toni Morrison's Black Book. Um, definitely pick this up, y'all. Like I said, it's definitely one that you want to have around the house. Definitely one that you want. It's a great coffee table book. Um, and if you have kids, this is like prime time. This is a necessity for your house. Um, <laughs> and I read it, y'all. I'm just like, like, and it's not like above like anything that I knew already, but like the fact that you put it in the paper. <laughs> You're like, oh, we don't want our poor whites to feel like slaves. <laughs> but again, like, I've had so many conversations where folks talking about, oh, well, and like, literally, like, even to, here's another thing before I go, because y'all know I will ramble. Like, I remember having, like, conversations with uh, folks, white folks, who would literally, like, try and equate blackness to, like, poverty or like blackness to like some sort of lack as if like all black people in the 21st century was just poor and basically exactly where we were during slavery, which when you talking collectively about the numbers in terms of like the money and collective wealth and things like that, we could go into a whole conversation about that. But we all know that like blackness does not equal impoverished poverty. Blackness does not equal all of these other like different things. Um, <clears throat> I remember having conversations with folks who would literally like talk about like, um, oh, you know, white guy, oh, you know, I had to eat beans out of a can and all of this and like, and all of that. And like, literally like, as we're having a conversation, trying to equate my blackness to him eating beans out of a fucking can. <laughs> you white <laughs> and I don't you know I, I'm America's a really messed up place and folks you know regardless of race nobody we live in the first world country nobody should be going without nobody should be living in poverty nobody should be having to like struggle and go through any of that sort of stuff but at the same time like you talking to a whole ass black man you talking you equating my blackness to like poverty and then like you trying to like convince me that we are like the same because you were poor like get out of here with that shit <sighs> y'all i can't this article this article shook me but <laughs> With that being said, that is the video. I will talk to y'all tomorrow. This is day 20 of the 28 days of Black American History Month. Peace.